Hello and welcome to another episode of Wedflix. I'm Julia Brame, I'm your host, I'm the editor of Unveiled magazine, the luxury wedding magazine, and the editor and founder of Brides at North, the top wedding blog for Northern couples. So today on the show, we invite Daniel Gill of Dine to talk all things events. So they are event specialists, caterers and they also have a fantastic collection of venues across Yorkshire and beyond. We're also going to talk to Daniel all about his new service Dine Delivered which is definitely going to bring some joy to people in lockdown and afterwards it can bring the party to your door. So let's hear from Daniel. So hi Daniel. Hi Welcome Julia. to Webflix. This is Daniel Gill. He is the chairman of Dine and I think, actually think, Daniel, you should introduce yourself and your business to okay, us. Okay, fair enough. Right, so briefly, I, I run Dine uh, with a team of about 25 of us, and uh, we're lucky enough to provide uh, catering and event planning in a range of venues, some of which we uh, look after ourselves, and people's homes uh, in marquees, and some venues as far and wide as uh, Liverpool to, uh, to Rise Hall on the, other, on the other coast, so yeah. Okay, so what's your background then? So how did Dine begin all okay, those right. years ago? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, mum and dad run a Michelin-style restaurant. And uh, so I, I sort of ended up knowing a lot about food and service and drink. It was kind of really tragic upbringing. And um, we, uh, we sort of, you know, I, I then um, did some training with companies in London like Leith's and a company called Mustard. Uh, which at the time they were at the top of the piles were doing work all over London. It was really fascinating. And I wanted to sort of come uh, back to Leeds, back to Yorkshire and, and, start, and start really from scratch. And um, when we started, really, we just, we just bought a kitchen and a van and we, and we worked with, with venues because, because of the sort of knowledge we built up. And we got to do a whole range of really fascinating events for people, everything from corporate events, office launches. We worked on the south of France uh, in Cannes, for five years in a row. And um, I mean, personally, my favorites are working and doing something really intricate um, in, um, in a nice venue, like maybe an historic venue, or, you know, I kind of love doing marquee events as well. Those are my two favorite things. Yeah, so your background is really, I mean, your training's impeccable. You, you mentioned Lisa, like just off the cuff, but that's Crew Leeds Academy, right? Yeah, it, it was, it was really good grounding actually. Um, and you know, mustard as well. I mean, I was working as a butler um, with mustard. I mean, I shook hands with Nelson Mandela um, wow. as one of the, one of the butlers, and worked in Downing Street. So you kind of—it's really interesting, actually. So somebody on a trainee's wage in London it was on like four hundred quid a month. Uh, yeah. even, it was basically could barely pay the rent. And thank thank goodness for checkbooks in those days, because otherwise it wouldn't be. <laughs> but, What's checkbook? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, exactly. I was joking, but well, I needed it then. So, um, and you kind of see things that you would never see. So when I started my own company, I, I sort of had a, an understanding of the absolute, you know, sort of length and breadth of what was possible. Yeah, and also, but like the years of, I, I don't want to, like Daniel is not really old, <laughs> but <laughs> you went into it young because of your family heritage. And those years in between, is it 21 years that you're celebrating, 22 that you're celebrating this yeah, year? 22 this year, yeah. Wow, 22. Yeah. Um, and we've been working with you for 10. That's gone quick, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Crazy. Hello and um, All those years in between, all those years, <laughs> that's given you a wealth of experience that you're that now bringing to every single event or party, a wedding that you're running. And, you know, you've organised weddings or events for between like two or like, I've seen you organize events for 20,000 plus. Yeah. Uh, at Leeds. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the graduation balls um, and, and graduation weeks. And I think that's, you know, you take the, the basic principle the same. So you speak to clients about what really matters and the skill is really getting um, a, a proper understanding of what somebody has in their mind, what sort of vision they've got in their mind, what sort of photographs they've been sort of, sort of caching away and and therefore uh get a real understanding of the result they actually want to see and then it, mm -hmm. it's it's working with them to say okay well where do you want to spend the money to create that picture on the day it's not just about the food and service necessarily it's it's, it's often about a number of small things that pull together yeah so when i was working well i am still working closely with you but when i was working actually i had a, an office in daniel's office for a while and um 
your sort of, I guess, mission statement or your ethos is, is from concept to completion. That phrase I heard a lot. Yeah. Um, what does that mean for a bride and groom or bride and bride and groom and groom who are, who are booking you? I think it's really important. You know, we take it very seriously. People come to us and it's two things. They, they, they're committing um, trust in us, not just on a financial basis, which is obviously incredibly important, but actually with a real one-off. So the advantage we've got is that we've got a long build-up to get everything right. The, the critical thing to realise, though, is you've only got, let's say, 10 hours to execute that. Mm. So actually, we haven't properly asked the right questions, got a proper feeling for what people want to see over the months, and then really worked on the detail. Um, uh, then, then ultimately, you're at risk of not delivering uh, things quite as they might be. So that, that for us, the concept of completion thing is very much about saying, okay, let's just take the time to have the right conversations, understand, have a bit of fun, understand what it is that lies behind and very often when we speak to people it's you know people say well we think we should do this and it's like oh hang on a minute nothing to do with what you think you should do it's like i want to hear what you like what you'd order if you went to a restaurant what flowers you like you know what sort of thing you know what hotels you like what what sort of things you like to drink so that then gives the picture of the kind of person what they probably really want to see on the day yeah that's the concept of completion it's simple as that really and what services then uh are broken down within that if a couple are booking you? Well, look, it can be as simple as, um, you know, some people really just do, I mean, well, look, don't deliver behind me. Some people literally say, right, we want you to deliver and we can go anywhere in the UK um, and we want you to deliver the following food. At the moment, we're doing a lot of Zoom dinner parties, so people are having the same meals, but across a whole uh, different locations. Uh, so we had Edinburgh and Folkestone and London last week. I know that was one dinner party. Um, and the same for weddings, we can just deliver really beautiful food that is ready to just put out and it's all you know, labelled and, and fantastic. But most people will talk to us about um, food service or event manager service and our event managers will literally consult from the very beginning to the very end. You get one person, that's the other concept of completion thing. One person you'll build a relationship with who will understand and will be there on the day until the last guest has left. So mm. that you know that all of those little things that have built up in communication over the time are uh, embodied and, and uh, that one person is there to make sure they're, they're, they're actually done. We also have clients who will come to us and say, right, do the whole thing. Yeah. So, what, you know, we've done a marquee at uh, Chatsworth for 1,600 people, uh, three-course dinner. Uh, we do events for clients who will ask us to fly bands over from LA or um, you know, do all the stationery, the flowers, the theming, the lighting, and of course, that's fantastic. And actually, at that point, the food and drink becomes quite um, quite a small part of it. Um, but to, to us, you know, it's, it's understanding what the client wants, where they want to spend the money, and where they're going to get value. Um, Absolutely. Probably. What's important to them. Yeah. So background-wise here, I've worked with you um, on a professional level. We've run wedding shows together. We've done all sorts yep. of stuff through on my magazine. Um, all sorts of that sort of thing. So I've seen you delivering weddings to other people. But you've also delivered some events for me and some of my really good friends. So I would always recommend Dan and Daniel and his team. So we did an event, and it's fine, it's because you're good. <laughs> so we did an event at um, my husband's factory at Brain Pressings for the 125 years. Oh, yeah, that was great. Which really was like a concept completion thing. I mean, I know what I'm doing with events, but you really held my hand with stuff through that. And it involved, you know, building a kitchen part of event yeah. on the steel yard, which, you know, is no mean feat. And if someone comes in and they don't know what they're doing, then we scuppered really. Um, and then a friend's wedding, Vicky Chapman's wedding, which was amazing. She put a, yeah. it basically like built a city on her mum and dad's garden. That's <laughs> what I described. Yeah. It was, it, that was yeah. an ordinary marquee. Um, yeah. And Daniel's team came in and, and they did the whole thing from the start to the finish. I think it was Craig Squelch running that one. He's an incredible event manager. Yeah. Um, yeah. In fact, it was. I wasn't that drunk. And it was just a great day. And it's, it's really good to have experienced it as a client as well as um, from, the, from working alongside you. Um, so I can absolutely sort of give my approval of what you're saying. It's, um, yeah, and listen, it's a brilliant job, isn't it? Because, yeah. um, I mean, I, I was thinking, you talked about doing the, doing the, the, the dinner um, at Brains. And to me, it's, it's saying, okay, well, yes, this is what the client wants. But actually, how do we make sure that when we turn up on the day, not just things like health and safety in a factory setting are dealt with, but also you know, floor plans, 
um, you know, exactly where is the bar going to go, exactly how we're going to position the lighting, because you, you can't afford a situation just because we haven't bothered to do a scale drawing mm. that actually the guests can't congregate for drinks in the right place or because you know, people have events to celebrate something. They have to be right. So it's all, it's all in the detail. And to me, that's very important. Um, it's also pretty straightforward. You just have to do it. Um, yeah. I think it's the same for the events. We love those events. You know, we love working out the green room where they're going to load all the, all the sound desks and, you know, how to actually get the, the spec right for bands, but without necessarily it being, you know, uh, without it spoiling the look from the bride and groom's point of view. So it's all of those things and how they knit together, really. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that particularly taking, say, the Brame event, that just so everyone who's, wa who's watching or listening understands, like, that was essentially like a 125-year-old dilapidated canteen. Well, it's <laughs> with, a bit, with, oh, hang on, it's a bit better than that. just really. over 100 years yeah. in some areas yeah. <laughs> that, you know, some walls were falling down. This sort of, I mean, it's a lot better now. It's looking ship -shaped these days um, since then. But it's, um, yeah, it was... It, 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 it's a, you literally brought it to life. It was it was a bit of a Ross and Rachel's wedding from friends, Ross and Emily's mm. wedding from friends type feel to that I feel, and it was built out of the ground. And you know, it's the same with a marquee. You, you're building on a site, and it, a marquee can be just a marquee, or it can be what you make it, and it can work for your event. So, um, and I think it's indicative of the approach, isn't it, Julie? Because ultimately, it's a one-off. You are you have to go into each thing. It cannot become uh, a conveyor belt. Yeah, and that, exactly. that's why we have individual event managers and very good ones that will ask questions to get a sense of what people really want. So to me, the sort of build, uh, you know, building of the kitchens and all the rest of it, even though we don't have to do that a lot of the time, it's indicative of actually the whole approach. It's a one-off event. You get it right. You write the menus, you write the specs, you get the timings right so everybody's comfortable. You get everything right and then that's it. It's done and you go on to the next one and they're all individually built. And I mean, this, this sounds like a lot of work, but this is the work you're doing. So the bride and groom, they know about it, but they're not doing the work. They're not having to rethink about it. Yeah, they're, they're paying just for it. it up. They're just having fun, aren't they, up front? It's great. Yeah, well, that's, that's the job. Exactly. So yeah. you mentioned your event managers there. Now, what yeah. I've noticed from working with you is your event managers don't often, even though you're so mean to everyone, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your um, event managers don't really turn over very often. No, we've got a great team, and you know, as you know, led by Matt, who's the MD. And I think, listen, it's one of those trades. So people that work in hospitality are there to do a good job. They haven't come into it because it's an easy gig uh, or because mm. they like, like the idea of a nine to five or because they saw a cookery show once. These are people who are willing to put in 16, 18 hour shifts because they want to get it right. And I think what's important to somebody is that they, have, they work in a company that, that will back them up so that has the right backup to get the right equipment there, to make sure that they've got the right environment to work in, to make sure they've got the right IT so they can write letters and do quotes for people and, you know, and they've got the right development and processes in the company. So I'd, I'd like to think that's why our team work with us because ultimately it's never going to be an easy job. It's not the point, but actually they want to know that when they're delivering a, an event for a client, um, there is nothing that undermines them. And I, th I think yeah. that's why we, we have a good stable team. Absolutely. And I guess that goes to your service levels because you are known for your excellence. You know, if the sort of events you're booking for the type of clients you book, is, is, mm. it's high end, um, although your pricing isn't exclusive. It's a whole um, range, yeah. Mm, exactly. Yeah. So within that service level, how are you achieving that? I mean, you just talked about your systems, but how do you, how do you make sure that kind of the, the service level's there for everyone when you're dealing with so many events? Okay, so I think it, it is about, uh, first of all, making sure you've asked the right questions so you, you can sell the right product. Um, and asking those testing questions. So I'll go and see a client and I'll say, look, you know, and there are some questions that are almost testers. So it's like, okay, well, uh, let, tell me what sort of linen you like. And some clients are looking and go, look, you know, I, I don't know, a cloth, yeah? And that's fine because yeah, that answers yeah. a number of different, you know, it's absolutely fine because you, you then know each question is about making sure you understand where they want to spend their budget and what, and what the right outcome is for them. And I think then after that, essentially, um, it, it is just about, as I say, asking the right questions. And we have clients who will spend £6,000 uh, with us uh, on an event, and that will be very, very hard earned money and we might literally the next day we might do an event that somebody spends a quarter of a million 
Mm. But it's just about understanding. Well, it, it's about providing value for each person. It's a, at a different level, really. Yeah, and there's, there's different factors involved in in both of those event, types of events, isn't it? I was going to say which is your favourite type of event, but it's not necessarily the half a million one, right? No, it's not necessarily. I mean, I think mm. professionally that can be more challenging. Mm. You know, so you go and do an event at Chatsworth for 1,600 people, or you go and do an event in the south of France, and, and that, you, I suppose in anybody, anybody who's interested in their job, uh, when, they, when they really push themselves, they get that satisfaction out of it. But, but it really is, I believe, you know, the event managers and the chefs and, 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 and the staff teams, um, you know, the reason they will turn up two hours before somebody's wedding and get a rehearsal and walk around with empty plates is because they want to get it right for that person. And actually, that attitude doesn't really change whether it's somebody spending a quarter of a million or £6,000. The attitude's the same. Absolutely. And that's how we get it right. You have to have people who want to do the job right. It, to be honest, skill level is important. People often ask how we recruit, and the answer is it's, it's attitude. We just want people who are interested in detailing and doing, doing a good job. Yeah, and that's why you get the reputation that you do, because you're delivering for every client in the same way. You're like showing up with the same level of passion, I guess. Um, has to be. Yeah, they've paid, they've paid us to be there, and, and, they've, and they've given us quite a high degree of trust. So let's talk weddings specifically. Um, and... Because I could go down the south. Obviously, we're filming this during lockdown. And I could go down the south yeah. of France route here very easily because I would love to be in the south of France right now. Yeah. Um, so, but let's talk weddings. Um, let's talk. So, let's talk about your your venues. So, Dine's yeah. a bit. It's a bit different in that your company has is um, you work as a coordination, event management, and catering company um, at people's homes in marquees in other venues. Uh, if necessary but you also work have your own set of venues the portfolio of really cool yeah. venues actually um do you want to talk us through your flagship venues and maybe for each one tell us a little bit about each one so like where it is its history yeah. a bit about its style what's special so okay, let's well, start with the mansion mansion fair enough okay so mansions in leeds uh sort of beautiful um I think a 1780s, late 1780s uh, Palladian mansion um, sits at the top of the park in Leeds, Randley Park, and uh, we operate a cafe restaurant there and, you know, a series of meeting rooms and uh, events, uh, weddings and events. And that also doubles our offices. We've been there since 2008. Beautiful place um, and just a really fantastic location in Leeds. It's, it's well, what, 15 minutes from the train station. So yeah. it's sort of fantastic. Pretty iconic as well, like right in the middle of Rancho yeah. Park. It's the finish as well inside the mansion um, yeah. is exquisite. The way you've, I think you took it over, didn't you? And you, it, it's your venue, so you've yeah. done it all up and put your. Oh, yeah. We spent half a million in refitting it, and I think that's nice to be able to do that. You know, the reason we started getting into our own venues is because whereas we work with some lovely places. Um, if, if you are responsible for the venue and you run it, you know that if you've had feedback the previous week about uh, car parking or people being a bit cold when they come in, you can deal with it straight away. If it's somebody else's venue, it's much harder to filter that message through. So that, mm -hmm. that's why we, we, we like to have, um, uh, you know, that degree of say over the client experience, essentially. So that's the mansion in Leeds, anyway. Um, so before we move on, yeah. <laughs> you're not getting out of it so easily. <laughs> What do you think is the standout feature of the mansion? Oh, okay. Well, look, I, I just love it. Well, I love the fact it was gifted to the people of Leeds um, by, well, okay. It was bought at auction uh, by the mayor of Leeds um, for uh, the city of Leeds, who then he mortgaged his house to buy it. And I love the fact it sits at the top of a park that was once a private estate, which is unbelievable if you think about oh, it. Right, didn't know that. Um, yeah, 700 acre private estate owned by Thomas Nicholson. Uh, it was bought at auction, 18, it was only in the family for, for less than two, gener two generations. Uh, bought at auction in 1870, I think. Um, I think that's right, having written many editorials. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and by 1890, it was already a hotel. Um, and, and so actually, it's one of the country's longest running uh, private venues. Um, and I just love the fact it's, it's you know, the top of a park. Anybody can come, uh, bring their family, whether they've arrived on the bus or whether they've just parked their car or whether they've walked from, you know, uh, from Rounder Oakwood or whatever. 
and it's it's just in the middle of, of this fantastic public resource um, mm. but it's, it, you know it has the best of both worlds sitting at the top of the park and inside as you say the interiors are fantastic it's just yeah awesome. super stylish yeah so what sort of couple do you think it would suit Okay, so for me, uh, I think that it's about anybody who wants, uh, who doesn't want the sort of away experience that, you know, don't want to travel to sort of uh, further flung corners of the county or the UK. Uh, they want a city wedding, but just want somewhere that's got that privacy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can have it in a hotel, there's some very good hotels around, but if, if it's the privacy you're looking for, and with that privacy and exclusivity, obviously be comes that service so we, you know it's what we talked about earlier we don't throw menus at people and say choose one you know yeah. we consult and make sure the menu is exactly adapted for people and and that the whole experience is right and i think that's what comes with the venue like that but yeah i would i would describe it as urban chic hmm so would i <laughs> thank you well there we are maybe <laughs> i'm ready for one of yours a really stylish yeah. couple yeah. maybe you know a bride who likes her fashion in a sort of silk jumpsuit hair in a ponytail yeah. very dapper and that will give you that sort of vibe. It's, it's, it, and you get the sort of the countryside, the outdoor element too, because it's in the park. So you, you, you're having a city yeah. chic wedding, but with the outdoors all around you. It's really special. Really special. One of my favourite venues. Um, okay, so Rise Hall. Okay, so Rise, yeah. Okay, so um, I've actually been re-watching the Sarah Beanie's renovation uh, programme <laughs> and discovering all sorts of things about the house I didn't really know. But what it reminds you of when they bought it in the early 2000s is, is what a state it was in. Yeah. And, you know, when we bought it off them last April, um, just, you know, they'd done years of work on it and done probably a job that nobody else could have managed to do in terms of, 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 of creating this fantastic 97-room uh, um, country wow. house um, in 30 acres of its own grounds. There are now 31 bedrooms. What we've been able to do, um, and we spent well over a quarter of a million this winter on it, is just really um, dive into the detail. So looking at things like night lights in the bedrooms, uh, USB charging points. And so I think our, our philosophy on accommodation in venues, that just because it's an old house doesn't mean people shouldn't get a mm. sort of five star plus level. Mm. And, and really looking at, we slept in each bedroom and really looking at you know where the water pressure's low and, and, and also kind of just making sure that when people are having an event there, you know, there, there is always Wi-Fi. Stupid yeah. stuff like that. And it, it probably is not central to people's experience, but it is. But I it, think it is. I think it. those are the things that can yeah. make or break a great experience. Like, oh, it was, fi it was fine, but it was so annoying that they couldn't get onto the exactly. Wi-Fi. Exactly. And you, you don't know. want people's guests saying that because actually it's not fair on the host. You know, you've got to make sure the guests have a good experience every bit as much as you can manage the bride and groom's experience. You've got to make sure the guests are having a really good time as well. I think the other thing that rises is just looking at the opportunities in, in the different rooms, the ceremony room. It's beautiful now, oh, absolutely amazing. beautiful. Um, and we, you know, we, we commissioned a, a plaster relief um, uh, sort of based on some of the stuff we've got at Housham, um, some sort of beautiful foil curtains to frame the room, a lot of new furniture in the public rooms, uh, the library, a completely different lighting spec in there now, uh, sort of intelligent speaker system, um, and just making it because these these places exist on two planes. There's always the event day when everybody's there, and you know the ceremony's taking place, the event's taking place, whatever it is. But there's very often the day before when the family arrive or when you know the organisers mm. arrive, and you you want to have a much more intimate feeling so they can relax. But part of relaxing is also that things are easily at hand. Yeah, for sure. So you, even and that's quite a challenge in a 97 room house is how do you make sure <laughs> somebody can get themselves a drink easily? Roller skates. Well, yeah, we all remember roller staff, skate. but roller skates, yeah, <laughs> listen, neon roller skates, catastrophe. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. what I think is really interesting for me is I have worked with you throughout the whole, um, in inverted commas, rise hall experience. So yeah. I saw you go in there as, as a consultant, because that's something yeah. you do for venues, isn't it? You go in with venues and you consult yeah. at whatever stage of the process they're at, um, when Sarah Beanie was, was ready to launch and getting ready to launch. Yeah. And then you moved away from the venue and they did their own thing. And now you've gone back in and take, and bought it and taken it over. I reckon it's like any project, you know, the, the, there are people coming first and will do the really hard graph, which is what I reckon Sarah and Graham and their teams have done. Yeah. They've made it watertight. They, you know, I mean, the work they've done is insane. And we've then had almost the luxury to look at it and say, right, fine. And what I always do is I, I was just walk through as if I was a couple. I look at the tariff, so whatever venue I'm looking at, so if we're doing consultancy or if it's one of our own venues, 
and I will walk through and say, right, you're asking me to hire this for four thousand pounds. What do I feel about it? Not mm. uh, where is the light switch or you know details. Just what do I feel about it? Do I walk through the building and, and does it feel inviting? Do I feel comfortable? Or do I leave and think, well, you know, it wasn't quite right. And then just getting a feeling as to how comfortable, what sort of emotional connection I can form with the space. And I think that was yeah. at Rise. It was just a few things like um, getting the lighting levels right, lots of lamps and, and, and a, bit, a bit of extra furniture and just some little finishing touches that have just really warmed it up. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. I mean, it is a difficult job because obviously you have to make it, it's not really a personal feel, is it? It's almost like you're feeling for the majority. Yeah. So I think that's really interesting. I mean, I, I have the privilege of going to lots of different venues and yeah. sometimes I really don't like them. So I'll like react. And there was one recently that I, I really didn't like, no names mentioned. But that was just me, and lots of other people love love it. I'll tell you off camera where. Um, but um, but that was a personal opinion, so I can't base my professional opinion on my reaction to that space. You know, I have to base it on what other people are telling me about that space. Um, and and you will get some. You know, brides and grooms will come to the different venues, and some will absolutely love them. Some will, for whatever reason, not like them. But it's it's about kind of making the majority of people's experience. Yeah, it's balancing, right. look, it's got to be authentic for the building and you can't try and be all things for people. However, um, you know, let you can choose rich colours without them being um, divisive. Yeah, you oppressive. Know, mm. so you, yeah, you can have authentic touches that, that aren't Marmite. Yeah, and, and stuff like scents yeah. and smells and lighting, you're right. It's all those yeah. kind of sense, sense things, sense touch points that are really important. A hundred percent. We will always make sure the whole building has the same scent throughout it. Nice. Stuff like that. We like will always that. make sure that we will only ever use a certain color tone of LED bulb. They always have to be dimmable. doesn't matter what light fitting it's in. So, you know, a lot of our work is around the very, very simple things that people won't notice. But yeah. ultimately, you know, you're coming into the library at 10 o'clock at night after dinner. You can always set the tone. You yeah, can always light the fire there. because we've made it easy to light. You can always put the music on because we've made it easy to put the music on. Mm -hmm. I love oh, that. That, that yeah. the attention to detail is impeccable. So, Rise Hall. So, what sort of um, bride and groom or couple would like to okay. get married at Rise? Well, okay. So, I think it's two. It's two different categories. One is, and we, you know, gen it's almost like wedding for two, or you know, wedding for twenty-four type scenario where people just want to go away. Um, literally, we do weddings for two, by the way. I should mention that, um, and they work. They work very well. Um, but, um, you know, and have almost that have the house to yourself or have the house to yourself, close friends and family scenario um, where mm -hmm. you are just cocooned in this beautiful area. Um, you can have uh, the, the services tapered. So, you know, you always have the house butler greeting people when you arrive. You'll always be taken to the room and made sure you're comfortable. Whether you then choose to add on somebody to make drinks and serve canapes is entirely up to you. It doesn't matter. Or whether you just ask us to put a lasagna in the fridge that you can eat later on with some beers from the pub. That's fine. You know, and we do both. And it has its own pub, by the way. Um, equally, mm. of course, being a 97-room uh, country house, um, it does appeal to people who want that big impact. But, it, but it's kind of unique in that it is, it is entirely private. So it, it is the largest um, stately home in Yorkshire that you can hire exclusively. Right, um, I don't know that. Yeah, it has 31 bedrooms. So from the point of view, and, and you've got uh, you know, access to all of, all of, all of the uh, rooms, well, all of the rooms you'd want access to. And um, you know, it's one of those things where it's quite an unusual uh, proposition in the sense that it has all the state rooms. But the other thing about Rise, which I really love, is as you move through, as the, as the day moves on, you know, ceremony happens, the photographs, the drinks and the canapes, and the, however people want to put that, whether you're outside, as you move through the day, you're also moving through towards the, through the building. Um, yeah. The back of the building's got a pub. It's got a beautiful orangery, which we've just recarpeted, put new chandeliers in. Um, you know, that, it looks absolutely stunning now. And you've also got a beautiful outside area right next to it. So Rise is incredibly um, different in that it has all the right rooms and the right spaces as the day progresses. We don't have to turn things round. We don't have to suddenly put a dance floor down in the middle of the room or ask mm. people to move. Or... So it, it works. And that's a big, that's a big selling point. 
I mean, a bride and groom coming to, to this for the first time maybe won't realise what a big selling point that is. You don't have to move all your guests out and move them back in again. That it's yeah. all, that, that flow is there and it's a natural flow. Um, it's a natural flow and you're getting the best of all worlds as, as you go through. People, I often find that if you try and have a wedding breakfast in a very formal room that quite clearly has an awful lot of valuable objects, people, you don't want people <laughs> to feel uncomfortable. Yeah, you, you want, want to be swinging to from the chandeliers. <laughs> Yeah, perhaps not, but yeah, you want them to feel as though, and you know, they, they're at the party stage then, aren't they? And you want them to feel as though they're at the party stage, not like, oh my, you know, I'm about to knock into this marble sideboard or whatever, you know, it's, it's all got to flow naturally. Yeah. yeah, it really does. Also, I think Rise is definitely one to book for the extended weekend stay, yeah. because, I mean, you want to play a game of hide and seek at some point in that house, don't you? <laughs> because, yeah, although I would have radios well, in case you have to give up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah to like leave a trail of breadcrumbs <laughs> you could seriously lose a game of hide and seek there yeah but i think that's the same at Howsham. so i'm really lucky to have shot um editorial for our fashion editorial caroline castigliano one of our very best designers yeah. in the uk at, at Howsham. um after you just after you just bought the, the venue um yeah. and wow is that an incredible place with a history yeah, and it is Oh, I love it. So Howsham Hall then, another place for a game of hide and yeah. seek. <laughs> well, look, I, I think, and it goes back to that point about you say, that emotional connection. So come up the drive to Howsham, mm. we lease it uh, from the owner and, uh, you know, we, we lease and, and, and fully operate it, which we do for, for, for most of our venues where we'd be responsible for them from beginning to end. Um, and it's a 500 year old Elizabethan uh, mansion beautiful light stone um incredible light in the building itself and again it's it's one of those places it's right on the river durant um 12 bedroom it's got the largest bridal suite in europe um and it has some really incredible ultra stylish touches yeah. so again it's that 500 year old thing but but actually it comes with a beautiful lightness and it just i have to say it's a real it's a real privilege to be there you know it feels yeah, fantastic great. when you're there having um, seen so many venues i mean it's like just so unique like you say you get that incredible facade when you come up to it and it is it, it's you know it is wow it's like straight out of a romance novel it's amazing yeah. or, or it's like a ch it's like churchly isn't it it's like wow it's stunning yeah. and then um and then when you get inside it's it's quirky and it's although you know you've cleared the spaces for the functions and for the varying different types of parties it's still got that feel of height and space and like you say lightness it's not stuffy it's yeah. very modern like you can imagine living there if you were mega rich yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? and didn't mind being a child of a grade one listed building yeah yeah um, exactly yeah um but you need yeah, a staff I, for sure it's, it's very it is I, mean, I think it's very homely and it mm. has that same ingredient as Rise, is even though it's quite, you know, it feels a bit overwhelming, actually, you sit in the library, you relax, and it, 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 how should the same is, you sit in the, in the Great Hall, and the, the, you've got the roaring fire, you go to bed when you fancy it, you know, you've got the house kitchen if you want to do your own food, um, you know, there are all sorts of different possibilities there. There's a billiard room, you know, down the, yeah. down, down the steps. But actually, at the same time, you're staying in this amazing house that you would never normally have the chance to stay in. Yeah, it's really cool. My favourite bit is, I'm quite a girly girl, <laughs> I think you know that, um, and um, I love the bridal suite. It's, it's honestly, yeah. it's, it is incredible. This big sitting it's room, beautiful. loads of light, a massive gilt mirror, like the biggest mirror I've ever seen. But it's also just so beautifully done, like the colours are, oh, like for fine art, wedding photography in there, it's just like my heart sings at that room. So it's yeah. really, really, really special. So what sort of bride and groom or couple uh, would like a Housham Hall wedding? Me, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Well, look, I, I just, for me, the, the, the sort of central iconic feature of Harrison is that, is that cantilevered wooden staircase uh, with the plaster reliefs uh, going all the way up and the beautiful white glass uh, chandelier uh, from Venice. And I, I think it combines this really special one-off place um, that, ha that has this incredible location um, in an in, um, in area of outstanding beauty. It's 20 minutes from York. It's so very accessible, but it just has that ultra chic look Good. to it. Um, I can imagine you get quite a lot of um, like couples from all over the UK at Howsham. So from London, coming up from London, 
not just local? Uh, yeah, exactly. So a lot, a lot of our guests at all the venues actually will be people that might happen to be working in London that probably were from that area originally. Mm, that's what yeah. I can see happening because it's quite a destination. But all, all three of like particularly Rise and Howsham, I think, are, are destination settings. Yeah. Um, and they they do compete with you know some of the top end sort of um, home counties venues. I would say. Yeah, they do. In terms yeah, of yeah, style yeah. and and delivery. We've, We've been very careful to look at the one, you know, the, the, the ones that are sort of 40, 50 minutes outside London yeah. and make sure that we've got the same level of facility as, as they have. Um, because, again, it goes out to the point. I, for, for me, I want my clients to know, um, not, not that they necessarily will notice everything, it doesn't, but, but I, the people that will notice, um, I want them to know that we've got absolutely everything in place for them. You know, and, and at Harrisham, mm -hmm. if you want fresh milk for your Nespresso machine, there's always a little mini uh, pint of milk in the fridge uh, for each guest. There's always uh, fresh orange juice in the fridge yeah. uh, on each landing. And it's those little things. Uh, it's making sure every single detail is right for people. It's, it's got to be, for me, I want it to be of an international standard. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And it's, it's probably be because good. of what we do, but like I noticed those things. So I'm yeah. super fussy now. I've, I've ruined, I've basically ruined hotels for myself. <laughs> I've come from a hotel background too. Yeah. But yeah, weddings and hotels are ruined for me. Because <laughs> yeah. they're never as good as I want them to be. Um, but um, no. so with, um, yes, yeah, so you, you also manage other venues, a portfolio um, yep. that are sort of closer to you than say just ones you would go into and run a day. So in brief, because we, we've got lots more to talk to you about, what, what other venues yeah. do, you, do you manage? And oh, well, my, cool my absolute favourite is, is Sefton Park, Palm House in Liverpool. And the thing I kind of love about that building is, uh, is we've just realised how close it is to the hearts of people in Liverpool. It staggers me how well mm. known it is. You know, it, it, there was millennium, a lot of millennium money put into to re restoring it. Um, that is a building at, at the heart of the, of the of sort of iconic park in Liverpool insofar as uh, in the same way that the mansion is in, in Leeds. Um, but, it, but it's a huge glass house. And an incredibly stylish space to have to have your your celebration. Oh, yeah. You know, it really is. I I love it. Um, and and the thing I love about it is the fact that actually everybody in Liverpool loves it so much. Yeah, you know, there's a real affection for it. Yeah, it's interesting. So we shot an ed another fashion editorial there actually. But um, what was really interesting about that one is we shot it. It was for a was spring summer one. issue. So we shot it in like the depths of January. Yeah. And I got a bit lost in the book because I'm not from Liverpool. I got a bit lost in Sefton Park. So I was kind of in my kind of indoor clothes, ballet pumps in January, in like freezing rain of Sefton Park, like scaling banks and trying to find this farmhouse. But once we found it and we were inside, it was blowing yeah. a gale. Like, honestly, sideways ice outside. It was like temperate, tropical. Yeah, you wouldn't know it to look at the pictures. <laughs> but it's not overly hot. Yeah, well, I know. It's, it's, yeah. It was freezing and horrible. But um, inside, it's just so... Like you're sheltered from it all. You could be on a desert island without the press of heat, and or for for a boho celebration with a bit of a different edge. It's yeah, it's perfect. I think I'm answering my, my next question there. So like the sort of couple that would like Sefton, it definitely a cooler couple or a Liverpool living couple. Yeah, exactly. Exact. And I, I think it's I it has to be fairly unique in terms of a setting. So you've got the beautiful barn uh, venues. Um, but actually, Sefton, you know, you've got this beautiful glass dome. Uh, you've got uh, the sort of subtropical planting. It, it, it is, I can't think of many equivalent backdrops in the UK no. uh, for your celebration. Um, and again, it's obviously, it's entirely private. So I, I just, it's a real favourite of mine, is that. Yeah, and that's why I was willing to go battle the wind and rain in January to shoot that, because it's so different. It, yeah. And I wanted to get in there before anyone else did. Do you know what I mean? It's... Um, yeah. It's really, it's, I, think we, I think I came across it because of you guys, or it was already in my radar. And then instantly, yeah. as soon as we could go there, it was, yeah, amazing. Um, we've already talked about marquee weddings. Um, yep. You work closely with a marquee company, Shades. We do, yeah. Um, but you've come up with any marquee company. We do, yeah. Um, so what's, what do you love about a marquee wedding? Oh, well, look, I, I just, um, I mean, obviously somebody chooses to build a marquee then uh, they're doing that for a reason. It, you know, it might be that, it, that, it, that they want it at home because that's particularly meaningful for them um, uh, or that they've managed to uh, have a piece of land that overlooks perhaps a beautiful lake. Um, and it's all about uh, looking at the style they want 
um, and designing the site so that um, people only see the point of that location. They don't mm -hmm. see the gobbins that goes with it. They don't see the heaters. They don't see where the vans are parked. Mm -hmm. They don't see the generators. They don't see cables trailing across the front door. You know, and that takes quite a lot of planning. Um, so, so you're designing something that essentially unleashes the essence of why that person hired that um, location or why they're having it there. Mm. Um, and it's understandable. But yeah, I love marquees because you can essentially do whatever you want to do. In yeah, it. and I think the options for marquees are so varied and better now than they used to be. Like a marquee yeah. can, <clears throat> it doesn't have to be freezing cold or boiling hot. You know, it, it can be temperate. It, the flooring can be right it can but it can also take on whatever feel you want so you can have kind of like a rustic wedding or you can have a pristine like my friend's wedding i mentioned before it was like a pristine sort of there were chill out it felt, felt like a bit of like an avita vibe you know there's yeah. um there's all different things you can do isn't there within these structures and again i guess for you the excitement is the logistics and how you deliver that for the client as well yeah it is and it's making sure that we've we've thought through um, we will always do a scale drawing of the kitchen uh, with power on it. So, you know, every single thing has to be thought through because when I get to the site, I'm not going to be wasting my time on trying to work out where, where I'm going to plug my oven in. I'm, I'm going to be making sure that everything I do is about leveraging the detail that the client has spent money on and making it perfect. That, that's yeah. the point of our job is, is not to sort of trip over the basics, but actually to get yeah. all that done in advance. And then when you're there, you are making sure that all the linen's perfect. It's kind of whatever they want, you know, or the gin bar, if that's what somebody's put emphasis on. Or, yeah, that would be yeah. good. <laughs> I'd like to go to one of those right now, actually. Um, so you just talked about plugging the oven in, which we haven't talked yeah. about yet. So your food, yeah. Dine's food is incredible, really special. And I've been lucky enough to sample it a lot um, over the years. And I'm definitely going to take you up on the Dine Delivered. When you were talking before about... Um, dinner parties we're doing like a zoom yeah. quiz every week with our friends so we're perfect get involved in fact you catered perfect, that with you you hosted that wedding the jamesons i think it was the first oh, wedding yeah, yeah 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 layla so, and stuart, layla and stuart. Yeah. I, don't, yeah. I don't know if I layla might be watching this but um yeah, yeah. that stuart's the girls are absolutely kicking ass in the quiz at the moment on the uh, friday night quizzes yeah. so we'll have to um We'll have to, to hook up a dine delivered for one of our quiz nights, maybe next week. It works. I mean, we, we did it with, the, with some friends as well this weekend. And it just, it's so easy. I was barely away from the table. Mm. You know, it just all comes ready to finish, uh, put in the oven and serve straight away. And that's the whole idea of it. So yeah, it's, it works really well. Yeah, we tried one on launch um, a couple of years ago. And so oh, this yeah. isn't, isn't a new thing. You haven't just come up with this no. quickly because of COVID, no. have you? You've been planning no. this for years and years and it's got a lot of yeah. thought. And, you know, the, uh, the website and everything's flawless. Yeah. The delivery is flawless. Um, do you want to tell us the web address for it? again so that i can pop I, it on the screen i can see it I behind would, you but i'm gonna I make it love big to. thank you on, then. Tell us so what it's um all the w's dine delivered.co.uk so i'll pop it across the screen so everyone can get to ordering but not before i place my order please in thank fact you. i'm gonna wait and release this later <laughs> so i can get my order in if you've got your um, slot yeah quickly tell us a bit more about dine delivered then so what is it because i know about it but Okay, so essentially, uh, we, we wanted to create something for people that uh, made it really easy to order hospitality food online. Um, at the moment, we're focusing on, on the dinner boxes um, because of lockdown, so we're keeping it simple. But actually, people can go on and order canapes, sharing platters, uh, nice sharing dishes for home. And the point of it is that you go onto the website, tell, tell us where you are, how many guests you've got, when you want your delivery, and uh, what sort of style you want, and it will automatically produce a suggested menu for you, which you can then very easily change. That's the really us. cool bit, by the way. Yeah, that's right. So you're not left looking for, oh God, you know, I need carrots or I need sauce or whatever. It's all there, it automatically populates. You can remove items, but essentially we do the thinking. And I think also you can say, okay, well, I know that John's coming and he's allergic to celery or whatever. And it will automatically mm. throw up a menu for John that ha has no celery in it. So it's a really, uh, I think the site does about 16 and a half thousand calculations for each order. Wow. Uh, you can add uh, groceries, you can add uh, drinks, we'll, we'll recommend wines to match with, with the menu you've, you've got. You can add cutlery and glassware. And in normal times, not now, but in normal times, you can add uh, staff as well. Um, yeah, I like that. That's nice because you can actually get your event proper. So next party I have at home, I'm definitely going to use this. Well, no, I'm not. I'm going to ring you. 
<laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. But I would, I would. So, it, you know, it can be anything from um, a meal for two or like on a Zoom call or when things um, start to fire back up again, like a christening yeah. would be perfect for. Yeah. Or um, a, a kids party. party menus on yeah, there. Kids party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I, having used it myself, what I found really impressive was the creativity in the menus. So yeah. just to get that point across, I think it's quite important. So it's not just like a steak and chips, although you can have that. It's kind of, yeah. there's flair to it. So, yeah. and, and you'll put together the elements of the menu. So there's like start a main course finish and sometimes like amused bouchers and stuff like that. So it's, it's yeah. really kind of artfully done. And I was really impressed with that. And, and that was knowing you, I was impressed with that. Well, thank you. Uh, listen, we drew on like 20 years of experience in food and more and said, okay, look, so one of my favorite items is a, is a martini glass that arrives and we do yeah. various versions. But the one actually we had on Saturday was oat roast salmon with a Bloody Mary gel on it and it's got cucumber salad underneath. So literally, you we're, and we've developed some of the packaging for that. Um, so that will arrive via DPD anywhere in the UK. Um, and literally, you take it out of the fridge, you take the lid off, you put it on a plate. The bread, if you order bread offers, not that you have to, but that comes in in a wooden um, warmable um, uh, container that you can put in the oven and then you can put it straight on the table. Uh, so, th so the detail is very important. Mm. We've thought through in, in minute detail. Actually, if I'm hosting a dinner party, but I don't have a member of staff, how do I do it so that I'm away from the table for a minimum amount of time? And how do I serve a meal that, that looks like I've kind of sweated for hours? Yeah, I like this. I really haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Love yeah. this. I think as well, it's, it's different from, people might confuse this concept like with the Hello Fresh or Mindful Chef concept. It's yeah, not like boxes. that. It's not, it's not um, everyday food that you, you know, you get your box at the start of the week. It's different, isn't it? It's, um, it's for occasion. Yeah. Eating. It's a birthday celebration or, you know, it might be some, somebody emailed me after one of my colleagues at Dine Living and said, look, actually, every month we have a dinner party and we normally mm -hmm. go around uh, each other's houses and do it and, and they're going to put in a, an order every month because it's it replaces that it's pretty cost effective as well i mean you've got three course meals on there from uh, about 22 pounds yeah and no uh, waste possibly. as well which is really key i think yeah. now nowadays yeah um yeah I mean, so i'm starting doing like a question and answer video like this because i get loads and loads and loads of questions from brides and grooms yeah, who are planning their own weddings all the time and I felt like I was DMing them back and it's just taking too much time so what I'm doing each week now is I'm going to do like a little bit with question and answers and actually one of the questions that someone sent in this week was how on earth are we meant to choose our wedding caterers when we're in lockdown if we can't taste the food but this presents a, a solution to that in a way it does yeah we've actually already sent out our first menu tasting by Dine Delivered right it's quite interesting yeah. So that so that is something that people can do with you because I'm going to name yeah. check you in that in that separate yeah. video because yeah. I think I don't yeah. know if anyone else is doing it. I doubt it. Um, I've I've been on a few seminars with the caterers. Listen, I mean, it, this took us uh, nearly two hundred thousand pounds to get to get to launch um, mm -hmm. be, because you have to be allergen compliant. All the packaging has to be supermarket standard um, and 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 beyond that. Uh, and that's before you've really even worked on the dishes that can just be very easily finished by people. Um, so I think that, it, it, you know, it, it is probably unique. Um, uh, it won an award for best use of technology. And, and as I say, I think the way it arrives um, on your doorstep anywhere in the UK, um, and it is at all in terms of purpose of fully finished meal, but for you to heat and serve at your own convenience, yeah. rather than a delivery um it, it is it is a unique uh, service at the moment yeah yeah and i hadn't considered actually the allergen thing because that that is going to be a bar um a problem yeah. isn't it for people doing doing tastings interesting yeah. uh it's nice to see hard work paying off thank you yeah. Time is now. Well, we've never been busier on the time delivered side so yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah. you know if it's not gonna work now yeah. when is it gonna work yeah, exactly yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. so okay um, let's play a little game based on food. Um, so cool. lots of couples have had to move their potentially summer weddings to winter. Um, okay. So super quick, three start and main course dessert suggestions, please, for a winter wedding at Rise Hall. Wow, nothing like being put on the spot. Well, okay, <laughs> look, uh, in my opinion, I would look at... Um, actually a starter i would i would keep 
rich but cold. So again, um, you know, if you, it depends on what you like, but you might look at something like a terrine, um, but something that, that's a little bit interesting, it's a bit rich, but, n but not heavy. Uh, main course, I mean, straightforward. Um, our most uh, popular dish remains actually a sirloin beef, um, but just done really beautifully. So it's pink edge to edge. Yeah, there's definitely a reason for that as well, isn't there? People, you know, people love that, and also it's a cross generational thing. So you know, you've got you've got you know everybody in the party will enjoy that, and very often you know it appeals to the bride and groom personally, which which obviously is the key factor. And I think dessert wise, I, I would say in winter you can't really go wrong with a trio because you can have some hot elements, but I would always recommend that you, you have some items on the plate that might be quite crisp and light despite it being winter, but you can also have like a, a, a winter crumble or something like that. So yeah, you don't want some kind of like bite. full and weighed down yeah. the party, even though it's winter, you know, you need something warming, but exactly right. stodgy. And there's a danger in saying, oh, what's the archetypal winter menu? Um, yeah, sticky actually, toffee pudding, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, which is lovely, and we do sell a lot of sticky toffee pudding, and it is delicious. But whether you necessarily want to sit through canapes and a three-course meal with sticky toffee pudding at the end of it, even oh in my winter, god, I really want to do that right now. I have to say, I'm absolutely starving. This is the problem with these videos. I, I start getting, I want to plan a party, I want to go dress shopping, you know. Yeah. But now, now I want to plan a party and eat a three, full three-course meal and I want to come to one of your ambassador's dinners actually that is what is in my head Diane uh, yeah. did these amazing ambassador's dinners for invited guests and the food at those is always just oh, it's, oh, it's we good. have a bit of fun at those don't we yeah we can we can sort of take yeah. the food that we might not take with somebody's event you see so yeah. so actually something I was going to ask next is um for when we come out of this lockdown phase if someone wants to have say a smaller celebration for up to five i guess now and then mm -hmm. a bit of a sequel wedding later on which yep. i think is a nice idea because then you still get your wedding on your wedding date if you're keen to get him or her, her up the aisle <laughs> and then lock yeah. them in now yeah. and then um, and then have your sequel wedding later with friends and family a big, big celebration um so for a smaller wedding i'm guessing you can do more creative stuff like you would do for one of your ambassador's dinners yeah. um and let's have a sample menu for a small, a small. Oh gosh! Well, look, that's where dinner. you know you, there are some things you wouldn't do for eighty guests. So it all depends on the bride and groom's preferences. But ultimately, you know, seared scallops uh, work incredibly well. Um, and uh, main course, you know, sometimes people might have a, a middle course where you've got a beautiful little sort of salad with. Uh, you know, we did one the other day with smoked duck, a smoked duck, pomegranate. Um, and Mitsuna, so you've got a, a really nice sort of middle mm. course. Um, and then, you know, people, uh, you, you could go, I mean, main course, it just depends on people's favorite, but, you know, for, for me, um, I love the idea of just having um, a really beautiful uh, piece of beef with summer vegetables, a really nice light jus, um, and dessert game, you know, some clients even want to do souffle sometimes in small numbers. But actually, mm. uh, we have these beautiful glass stacking dishes. Um, so one of my favorite dishes is where we use, in the base, you'll have the uh, a chocolate uh, ganache disc. So uh, like a cold chocolate fondant, that's absolutely fantastic, with summer berries around it. And on the top, you'll have uh, what we call our pim soup. So we'll come with a glass teapot and pour pims. And then uh, you've got crushed meringue and you've got uh, um, a little mini summer pudding. So you can do sort of more intricate things. But for me, really, the lead comes from the bride and groom. You know, we've had people who have weddings for or parties for ten, where they've had fish and chips as the main course. So, yeah, I love that. And but done, done right, I guess. Exactly, just has to be really good fish and chips. And also, your down deliver thing does kick in for these couples who maybe can't have the stuff there, or you know, yep. so people who are wanting to have a celebration meal after, say, a registrar ceremony at the moment. Yeah. Perfect. It is, yeah. If you're a family unit, um, you, mm. can, you can very easily have that um, and you can have a fantastic meal. Um, that is very easy to provide. I mean, we, you know, we've even looked at drive-in weddings where essentially the family is in the house the night before. Um, you have the ceremony with the guests that, you, that you're safe to be with in the house. Bear in mind, our, our venues are entirely private, so you'll never have random people walking through. We can always... Yeah. get people to self-certify that they're symptom-free, whether they're suppliers or staff or guests. You, you can always have a reasonable degree of security um, in that sense anyway. Um, and I think then the guests on the day can arrive, um, park up, we can have the parks 
uh, the cars parked uh, at a distance. Everybody can get out on the left hand side, bring their own picnic rugs and sort of watch the ceremony live streamed and the speeches live streamed. So we have a couple of inquiries about that. Um, equally, as you say, we've had people just say, right, wedding for two. And when we, we've actually done two weddings for two. So, right. Yeah. Wedding, I, I like the idea of, um, I like all the ideas actually. I like to hear all the different options because I think it's important for brides and grooms to have, to have just to, to, so some of the ideas you've come up with there I hadn't thought of before already. So I think it's really interesting to just everyone to keep talking and keep coming up with these new concepts um, so that then everyone's got all the options in front of them to choose from. Because I was thinking I like the idea of a small civil ceremony or whatever than a, a big party. I like a big party. So a big party yeah. afterwards. But actually you could have the smaller thing, the smaller sort of picnic rugs thing, and then have a party later as well. I don't know. Like, no, there's lots of options. There you know, you will, yeah. you will get married before yeah. watching this. And eventually this will all be done and dusted and we'll all get married anyway. Um, so actually, going to the picnic rug thing, what about like a catering for a summer picnic? Oh, yeah. Listen, we've got some beautiful options for that. I really love putting those together. Um, so on our blog, uh, if, so, if you type in picnic on our blog, you'll see some absolutely fantastic little picnic concerts we've done. But actually for the drive-in wedding type scenario, whether, that's, you know, whether that becomes a corporate format or whether it's a, a private celebration or a wedding, um, really, you know, people come down the driveways. We've got the benefit of having fairly long driveways at our, our, our venues. We just give them uh, some really beautiful drinks um, that are easy to drink in the car, so you're not sort of stressing. Um, and equally, you can have either very nice picnic or afternoon tea format. Or, of course, you know, we, we've done a lot of the sort of three-course uh, stacking uh, hospitality where you might have a beautiful cured salmon, uh, then a smoked chicken uh, salad, um, uh, for main course and then say a lemon posset for dessert so you can have things that even though they are handed over at a single point so they are mm. very safe for social distancing that actually can be really beautifully done yeah um, it, it's still really celebrational and my yeah. mind's whirling, whirling now because I'm thinking actually you could do really cool even if it wasn't a wedding you could do like a drive-in cinema experience or like yep. you know yeah mm, could be quite Please do that. Yeah, you can either have a giant screen. I'm desperate screen. to go to the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, is that, you can have a giant screen for, for that, or, you, of course, you yeah. can just have people watch it on their own devices. So it suits a range of budgets, really, is the point. Mm. You don't have to have the budget to put up a, a huge screen and do the AV. You can just literally stream it to your own um, URL so people can... Yeah, yeah, but everyone in one place with the... With the yeah. I like that idea. Yeah. Please do that. Um, Okay, you've given me loads of food for thought. There we go, keeping it cheesy. Um, so, Dan, how can we, Michael Bold's um, uh, viewers, listeners, find out more about Dine? It's really easy, isn't it, the web address? Yeah, okay, so web address is dine.co.uk. And one. you'll see on there, we've got two ways, either the contact form or Drift, uh, the chat, uh, and either just say, look, you know, I'd, I'd love a call back with an event manager or I'd like to speak to an event manager now. And just, just ask, for, ask us to get in touch with you and we'll contact you at your convenience or chat with you there and then and just get some ideas going. Simple and people that. do need to be viewers. planning ahead at the moment, don't they? People still need yeah. to plan ahead. And... Yes, uh, absolutely. So one of the consequences of, of postponing everybody's weddings, and we've postponed nearly 90% of, of, of the weddings, obviously, in, in, up to the end of June, um, it is ultimately that uh, the dates for next year are now almost gone. Uh, certainly the peak Saturdays. Um, and I, 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 would, I would definitely recommend doing that. Bear in mind also, we, we are now allowed to do viewings at our venues. Um, that, that restriction was lifted at the beginning of last week. Um, okay. Also on the websites, you can see really detailed 3D tours, um, certainly for Rise, Harsham, and then Mansion also has 360 tours as well. What I think is really interesting about your virtual tours is that they're useful in two ways. So they're useful for bride and groom to love the venue after watching the virtual tour to actually sort of plan their day more. So if they've, even if they've already booked it, they can like revisit it and they can look yeah. around the rooms again. Measure and get everything. For it. Yeah, I think yeah, that's a great way to, for them to kind of keep connected without having to keep coming back. But also like, you know, for, for customers shopping around for a venue, it kind of stops them having to go to many venues that they're just going to rule out straight away on, on arriving. And it also saves your guys time too, so that then they can, you know, put their all into servicing the clients that do want to be getting married at those venues. It kind of, yeah, it's, I a, think, it's a point that you, you know. I think so. Although I would say to people, um, for me, 
I, it comes back to that connection thing. You know, you, yeah. it's a bit like buying a house. Um, you, will, you will come up the driveway and you'll walk through the building. You'll, you'll either think to yourself, that's it. I want, I want to have my party here. You mm-hmm. should always feel that, yeah? And yes, of course, fair enough. There have to be practical considerations. But first and foremost, you have to feel emotionally committed to that space. Yeah. And that brings you that. Because if that's there, frankly, everything else will follow. Yeah, that's great tip. Um, yeah. So, and then your Dine Delivered address again? Thank you, yes. Okay, so that is um, dinedelivered.co.uk. And what about on Instagram? Ah, uh, now you're now you're uh, now you're testing me. <laughs> so that is so uh, well. All of, basically, yeah. I would go hashtag uh, distinctively dine. And you'll find find dine at yeah. dine venues. Thanks, Julia. No, it's I'm fine. glad you know it. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Dan. You've been amazing. Thank you very much. It's been an thank absolute you. pleasure. Thank you.